Hello, girls and gals. Welcome back to Cafe Crashdown. I am Kayla, and we are here talking about season 14, episode two of Doctor Who. Let the credits roll. Hey, my dudes. Welcome to the Cafe Crashdown. I'm so excited that you guys are back here with me. We are talking about episode two of season 14 of Doctor Who. I am so, so excited because we are gonna be talking about not only this episode, because there was a lot of really great little nuggets in this episode. We're gonna be talking about my girl, Jinx Monsoon, absolutely killing it as the maestro. But before we dive into the episode, make sure to give me a like on this video if you end up liking it definitely hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so that way you don't miss my next reaction to the next episode of the season of Doctor Who. So let's get into it. So we are entering the spoiler zone. So for those of you who have not seen the episode, just, just turn around, just go away, just go away, just go, go watch the episode and then come back here, okay? Go do that, have fun. It's a great episode, so it's worth it. Now, for those of you that are here with me, let's talk about The Devil's Core, which right away the title was super intriguing to me. And then we get this really interesting opening scene, which I was first, I was like, who is this guy? I mean, you know, it's, n it's not very uncommon for us to go back in time and, you know, to be at a different time period and to have like a historical figure or something being introduced in the beginning. But I was kind of wondering where this was going. And then we get Jinx making this incredible reveal, climbing out of the piano. And oh my gosh, the delivery. Oh man, she just went for it. I love the camp. I love the drama. I love the intensity. I mean, she just was so fun. And here's the thing, that those are good villains to me in Doctor Who. And some people, <laughs> There were just some ridiculous comments uh, before Jinx even appeared in the episode. This was like before, and we're, you know, they were promoting this episode. The comments that people were leaving were just so ridiculous, talking about, oh, it's a drag queen, it's gonna be super over the top, and it's just out of control. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, what show have you been watching all of these years? Of course, a lot of the villains are over the top. I mean, come on, the master himself is over the top, okay? Missy, absolutely over the top. I mean, you name it. Like, I'm just gonna post a bunch of pictures, okay? I'm posting, I'm posting a bunch of pictures so you can see all of the camp of some of these villains. All right, so again, I don't know where you've been living, but just because that she's a drag queen, it doesn't mean that she can't act. She absolutely can. She was fan freaking tastic. Jinx, you killed it, absolutely. So, interesting. Now, let's get to the actual episode itself. So, we are in the 1960s and we're gonna go hang out with the Beatles. And so they get all dressed up all cute. And so he's giving her the whole introduction of, ooh, the Tardises have costumes. And so of course they have this like really fun time where they get into the costumes. They're like, oh, look at this, oh, look at that, oh. And they do, they look absolutely adorable. He looks great in his outfit. I'm just, oh, I love him. I'm already here for him. I love him so much. And so they go out and they're gonna go and they're gonna hear these iconic songs from the Beatles being recorded. And then they get there and these are shit-tastic songs. <laughs> the dog one just really made me laugh when I first heard that. I was like, oh, okay. Like I'm no songwriter, but that's pretty bad. And then hearing all of the other music that was being played. Wow, wow we. So, interesting right and then now we have this like a basically an apocalyptic world or at least that's the vibe that we're so slowly starting to enter into because music is not in the world so i think that's a really fun theme to kind of play off of like really when you think about the importance of music in your life we use it for everything right it's as they say as corny as it is the soundtrack of our lives but it's really true so to basically remove that from our lives, what would that look like? And it would be, it would be so sad and there would be wars and famine and like all kinds of stuff if you really, really think about it. So I thought that was just a really fun way to kind of play off of like a um, 
post-apocalyptic situation, which I'm not in the 60s, but this is like when they like go into the future because Ruby wants to see what her home is like because it was fine. Like they left and everything was great there. It was normal. You could hear music outside. Like it was all good. But then when he puts her back into the TARDIS and they go to her time again, then she like looks out and she sees this like destitute world. Um, right before her eyes. And then the maestro just making that beautiful gown entrance and, you know, just basically telling them how it is, you know, like, hey, you know, here we are. And this is my world now, babies. One thing that I thought was really cool was that the doctor mentioned Susan in this episode, his granddaughter. And then we have Ruby being like, you got her granddaughter, you have kids? Yes, ma'am. He has been around for a very long time. And so it was really cool getting that call out to Susan. So yeah, when the doctor first gets introduced to the maestro, she sings a, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm not great. The, what is that called? A Reggio or something? And we know what that is if you watch the 60th anniversary. Hello, the toy maker. So right off the bat, we already get a cue to the toy maker and the maestro. There is a, there is a tie there. What is it? It's one of his children. And I love that. I loved that reveal as well because it was like the Maestro had their one persona and personality, but then when it was like revealed and known that they were a child of the Maestro, then you saw like the costume change at one point. And so it was playing off of the same look and vibe of Neil Patrick Harris when he was the toy maker and that, that, um, that chaos, right? That chaos energy. I just, I loved it. It was so fun. And she played it off so well. And so I thought that was really cool. And, you know, we're hearing more about pantheons, which I thought was very interesting. And we're totally getting into a whole new realm of Doctor Who, which I'm very excited about. So in terms of them saying that with the Doctor mentioning pantheons, that then means that these are godly beings. If these godly beings, because godly beings come from pantheons. So we don't know like what pantheon the toy maker and his children come from, but it's definitely inferred that these are godly beings, um, which are obviously incredibly powerful. So I'm so curious to learn more about that. I also kind of believe that the doctor might be of one of the pantheons as well but that's just a little theory of mine i don't know we gotta let the seasons play out to kind of see how that works but i'm kind of thinking that's where that's going and could it be a reason why they're all being pulled to him as well right synchronicities hey. so a couple other things that i just wanted to briefly mention we have the sonic that disrupts the audio which totally throws the maestro off and the maestro has a lot of fun with like kind of just being taken for a ride, which they're not expecting because they're such a powerful being. So like to have someone that kind of like outsmarts them for a second, you know, they're like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing. And then she takes them tuning forks, you know, and she puts it in the ground. And so that was really cool to watch. I love the use of tuning forks. That was really cool. So then we had this uh, snow situation come again. So we had a shot with Ruby and it was basically like when she was thinking about the memory of her being a baby and being abandoned and it was like that snowy night at Christmas, she basically brought that memory into the current reality, right? Because we got snow and the TARDIS and even the doctor's like, you know, what the heck is this? And so then even in this episode, there was a point where we then got snow again coming in. And so, you know, and then we had a point where the maestro takes their musical chords and it's, you know, got Ruby entwined in all of this and her soul song is singing and singing so beautifully and freeing and it's something that the maestro can't touch it's very unique and so then this kind of adding more to like what is ruby's origin story where does she come from is she a godly being as well we don't know but definitely some interesting things there to think about and i would love to hear from you guys in the comments what your thoughts are about this. So I don't know if anyone else caught this. So when I do watch stuff, I tend to throw up subtitles because I like to read and see if I miss anything. And, oh my gosh, what did he say? He said, Aliyama? 
Did I say that right? Oh my gosh, if you are, the only reason I'm saying Turkish is because it came up on my subtitles as to Turkish. So I'm like, oh, is this his new like catchphrase? Like we have like Alon Z for, you know, David Tennant. And so like, is this his like, let's go, you know, onward <laughs> kind of a catchphrase. So Aliyam, Aliyama, I don't know. You, you guys can let me know if I'm saying that right. But I caught that. I'm like, oh, is this gonna be like his new like catchphrase thing? I don't know, let's see. So then we have this like super awesome music battle, which I'm like, oh, is this like the devil went down to Georgia type situation here? So I thought that that was really fun and cool kind of a thing. And then one of the quotes, I have to like pull it up on my phone because I wrote it out that I really loved where he says, I can smile like this because I've lost so much. That's where music comes from. And I thought that was really beautiful. <laughs> it's like, oh, yes, I feel that. I definitely feel that. So I thought that was a really great line there. And then we say goodbye to Jinx. And I'm gonna keep calling her Jinx. My Maestro, Maestro, I'm sorry, Maestro. We say goodbye to Maestro. And then she gives another warning, like the one who waits is basically on the way. So I'm assuming another one from the Pantheon, another child of the toy maker or somebody from that Pantheon is coming. And I guess to seek revenge on the doctor because of the toy maker, I don't know. I can kind of see that if we're playing this whole God card because the doctor was able to confine a god like with the toy maker right like confined him and then he just now was able to banish maestro and put her back in her little like pandora's box so i could see that as being as a god like a major threat right they don't like to be told what to do kind of thing and so uh, yeah, I could see them being very threatened by the doctor and wanting to kind of dampen him, put a damper on that, you know, you're getting a little out of control. So we're just gonna, we're gonna silence you and then move on with our lives. So I'll be curious to see who this is, which, you know, there's a lot of announcements with, uh, past characters that we're going to be coming back into the fold. So Definitely excited to see how that plays out. Is there any tie with them to these pantheons or, you know, to the toy maker and stuff? Or are they just going to be making like a grandiose appearance, which I'm also here for. So we'll have to check it out. And then of course, because listen, I get it because it is a music themed episode. We have to have a dance number, but guys, this musical number and this episode went on so long. Okay. Again, I understand that we have to have a musical number because music is back in the world, everybody's feeling it, you know, and it makes sense for this episode. But my God, it went on way too long for me. I was over it. I was absolutely over it <laughs> after like a minute. I was like, okay, I get it. Music's back in the world. Let's go, let's go, let's move on. We got things to do. We got places to visit. Like, let's stop with the dancing and the singing and like, you think it stops. And then they start like, dancing on the sidewalk you know like it's a piano kind of a thing I'm like oh my god please like well, it's just not so listen if you saw my other review on the holiday special you'll know that i'm not a musical number gal so that is just a personal thing for me but you know it's fine it's whatever so they get back in the tardis and they are on their new journey guys so that is my rapid fire short recap of the devil's cord basically me just going on and on so much about how much i absolutely love jinx monsoon in this episode as the maestro and yes i know i'm biased because i absolutely love jinx i've been a huge fan of jinx as a performer for many years ever since i saw her on rupaul's drag race so i am just so excited to see her career just blossom and grow and get her into my favorite fandom so i am totally not upset about it and so and i also really hope that we get to see her again because not only just because it was jinx but the major was a very fun character as was the toy maker so yeah definitely curious to see if we're gonna get any of those characters back in this season or even like season two we'll just we'll have to see but Definitely was a really great episode and seeing the trailer for uh, the next episode of uh, episode three, it definitely looks like we're going to be hitting more of the suspense, suspense train 
Um, so I'll be excited to see what planet we're on and what situation the doctor and Ruby have got themselves in. So if you haven't yet, please hit the like button. If you like this video, hit subscribe, ring that bell, and I will see you guys next week for episode three of season 14 of Doctor Who. So take care.